Greetings folks, now that I have the access version of the R9, I can use the, uh, the what is it, the FRSky R9 RXSR pilot flight control board with the onboard R9 uh, mini receiver. My first test, I couldn't use that because I didn't have this radio basically, so I had to use my other, uh, I had to use a, an ACCST receiver, which was the XM Plus, just on S bus. Uh, so I thought I'd just go through some of the setup to do that. Uh, now this is running on INAV 2.6, so you, you have to get the download from the FR Sky uh, website because 2.6 isn't officially available yet, not the um, the stable release anyway. Uh, but you can get all the bits and pieces you need from the FR Sky website, so you need to download them and use that to configure it. You have to make sure you're on the latest access firmware for the module uh, because I found, even though they're both on access, the uh, receiver and the module, um, I found I could register and bind it. It would show up here, the normal binding routine, but it would immediately go into fail-safe mode as soon as I got out of the bind mode. So the firmware, let's just go and have a look at that. So if you look at the firmware for the module, uh, we've got to go for the 1.3.0 version. I think I was on the 1.1, which wasn't compatible with the R9 receiver on board. And to do that, you have to find the firmware on the FRSky website for the module, put it on the SD card into the firmware folder. There it is there. And flash external module is what we did. But I've already done that, so we don't need to do it again. Then it all binds and uh, operates properly. Here's my mixer setup. Aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. Then I have all my, my mode switches there. And I have flaps on channel 10 on the S1 pot there. All the switch callouts are there. Launch mode. Altitude hold. Position hold. Manual mode. Return to launch. Throttle active. And all these tracks can be found on the Amber Sound Pack. Now, you might be interested in the way I set up my modes. I like to have uh, sort of all modes on separate, all switches up. Uh, there are no modes selected, so that means it's in acro mode. I have. Auto mode. Uh, so that's auto trim on the on channel 5 on that switch there. Auto -tune. And auto tune. Uh, I may occasionally use auto trim. I rarely use auto tune. I, I find uh, I do a better job using manual tuning. And I have auto tune on a five second repeat just to remind me that auto tune is actually on. Angle mode for checking the uh, board alignment and even flying around occasionally just to check out whether it's working. Need to get angle mode working properly for all the navigation modes to work well. Launch mode. Launch mode, occasionally I rarely use it. Altitude hold. Altitude hold I use a lot if I'm doing a, a trek out on a uh, FPV flight. Just leave it in altitude hold and let it fly. Position hold. Position hold just for uh, pausing and uh, circling around a spot. Manual mode. Manual mode, very essential. I launch in manual mode often so that I have full control. Return to launch is essential and uh, arming on that switch there and that's it on um, flaps on the S1 pot. So the onboard receiver is connected to UART 8 so that's not available for anything else. The FR Sky OSD is on UART 6 so again you can't use that for anything else. Uh, and the GPS uh, in their diagram they show it on uh, UART 2 which is fine you can put the GPS wherever you want to. In the receiver page you can see you need to set it up as F port 2 and receiver and um, on an auto and on the GPS page just check that the total messages is actually counting up and not sitting at zero. Uh, if you're actually getting numbers counting up there then it is connected correctly. If, you, if it's just sitting at zero you may need to uh, grab the RX and TX and swap them over like that. I've, I've got it on a two pin plug so that I can easily do that. And if you've got uh, a blue light on your GPS, then you know you're powered up correctly. So that's pretty much the only unique stuff to the pilot flight control board. The rest of it's pretty standard INAV stuff. 
So let's go out for a fly and see how it performs. Well, I've only got it on 10 milliamp, uh, 10 milliwatts because that's all I need for flying around here. I have flaps on uh, the dial there just for a bit of fun because we've got so many ins and outs on the board. Up and away. There's the lovely uh, Pixel uh, OSD. Uh, I've got to move everything down a little bit. This is as it comes, a sort of stock setup of the OSD, which isn't the way I have it. I need to have altitude and uh, things in different positions, but um, this is the way it comes anyway. Reasonable amount of wind around. But the train star ascent is going well. Stock settings, I haven't changed anything really. Uh, just flying beautifully. I don't think I want that uh, ladder horizon thing that thing over there. It uh, doesn't do anything for me. I prefer to have a clear screen really and just the information around the outside which I will set up eventually. RSSI uh, 8079 on 10 milliwatts. That's getting out to 300-400 metres away. It's pretty cool. Video feed's nice too, nicely filtered. Let's drop some flaps, see what happens. Kind of looks after itself. They don't have any elevator compensation does dip down a little bit, but uh, or up a bit and down a bit. It's no drama. Kind of adjusts for itself. Let's try it in acro uh, angle mode. Angle mode takes care of it. Altitude hold. Doing its job. Position holds. It's a bit too windy to do these sorts of things, maybe. So. Uh, be a bit careful. Anyway, that's good. Windy, windy. Whoops, watch out for me. And I stayed upright. Very nice. Now I'm editing this bit in later on. As you can see, I've actually taken the little R9 FC receiver out uh, because the antenna broke off. That's the problem with having the uh, receiver fixed on board there and the an antenna having to be positioned somewhere nearby. You're, you're sort of always going to be flexing this joint around. Um, I think I would actually prefer not to have an onboard receiver and position the receiver and the antenna wherever I want to and sort of secure it nicely. So if you're using this you really have to make sure you're Hold your um, uh, got some strain relief on the antenna wire there just so that that joint doesn't flex like crazy. It happened after I recorded the FPV part of this video. Uh, I wish I had recorded <laughs> what was happening, but uh, I, I basically had enough. It, it broke on a landing, I think. I basically had enough signal to take off, and then the uh, board went straight into fail safe mode, so went up to 50 meters and was circling around my head. There's a decent amount of wind, so it was sort of uh, doing an oval pattern out over the, um, the busy road behind me, which was very scary. I had no control. It was basically zero RSSI and in fail-safe flight uh, return to home mode. Uh, then I realised I was only on 10 milliamps, so I thought uh, my best bet is to boost up the power of the module, which you can do on the fly. I boosted it up to 100 milliwatts and I got enough signal 
uh, just without an, an antenna connection and to give me back control then I landed it straight away and packed up and came home and so yeah I'm decided I don't really like an onboard receiver mount like that and not in this sort of situation anyway might make sense on a quad or something like that but um, anyway bit of an adventure